Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this and for those of you who've watched my other recent uploads or relatively recent uploads you'll have seen that this arrived recently in a, a box of stuff from New Zealand and it is indeed a New Zealand DPM smock. Uh, it has the quite distinctive New Zealand DPM print uh, and we're going to talk about its, its design features uh, and details of it. What I have on my right here, your left, is a 1968 pattern British DPM smock and as you'll see when we compare these two, which is what I'm actually going to do in the video whilst talking about this, the New Zealand smock is essentially uh, their version of the 1968 pattern in terms of the features, the design, the cut. It is essentially a 1968 pattern smock. Uh, as I say, you'll see that as we go around and look at the various details of the, of the uniform and compare them. So starting at the top here, we can see the collar here, very simple, plain collar. This can be zipped right up and buttoned up. As you can see there, there is a buttonhole and a button, so that can be buttoned up. The same is true of the 1968 pattern, simple plain collar with a buttonhole and button at the collar there. This in contrast, obviously the buttons are of essentially battle dress pattern, if we can consider them that, this design going back to battle dress uniform. It's got a very heavy duty plastic zip as you can see there. Um, the cut is essentially the same, the, the pockets are very very similar, we've got patch pockets on the chest here and down below. The flaps are square on the New Zealand um, smock uh, rather than pointed, uh, that is one difference. This is also made of a sateen type material, uh, whereas the New Zealand smock is made of more of a drill, a slightly thinner drill material um, in contrast. Obviously the DPM print differs quite considerably. I believe the early examples of these smocks and these date from the, I believe the late seventies, early eighties. Uh, this is a mid eighties one. The earliest ones had a very similar DPM print before New Zealand moved to what I, I have to say, I love New Zealand DPM. It's more akin to our tropical D, Britain's tropical DPM. Uh, the move to this more distinctive New Zealand uh, colors in the DPM print. As you can see, we have the, the same uh, arrangement of buttons down the front in each case. Uh, a draw cord at the waist here and at the hem, or at least there is a channel for one. There's no draw cord installed, but there is a channel at, at waist and the, uh, the uh, hem there for a uh, draw cord. And as I say, you have the pockets here. The details go even further than that in terms of the, um, the, the similarities. We have a, a, a dart here and you, under the collar here as well on each side. And the same is true here on the 1968 pattern, as you can see. Uh, we'll move these around now and we'll have a look at the left hand side. So looking at the left hand side of the two smocks here, we can see further similarities. We have a, a pen pocket here on the New Zealand smock and we have again a, a similar pocket, in fact a near identical pocket on the British smock here. The difference again being in the design of the flap, this is pointed on the British smock and squared off on the New Zealand smock as you can see there. Um, there's no elbow reinforcement or anything here uh, that had disappeared from the 1968 pattern by this point. So that's not surprising, that's not a feature on the New Zealand smock. The cuffs have a simple adjustment here. You've got two buttons at the cuff and a pointed uh, tab there that can be buttoned to either one of those. And there's a big, there's an expansion uh, gusset in there as you can see, so that just folds over and buttons up. And that feature is again taken directly from the 1968 pattern. You can see there we have the same pointed tab and two buttons there. So that is essentially the same as well. We'll move these around now and have a look at the back. Looking at the back of these again, we can see the, the stitching here, uh, taking this in around the waist, and that is replicated from the British pattern onto the uh, New Zealand pattern. Another area the New Zealand pattern follows on from the British is in the arrangement of the buttons around the collar. If we turn, well, you can actually see the button here already. You have three buttons around the collar. Uh, the two on each side also attach the very long epaulettes, and that's true of the British smock as well, as you can see here. Uh, so that's a feature copied across again. In British service, this is for attaching a hood. I'm assuming the same is true of the New Zealand smock. Turn that down again. We'll move this round now and we'll have a look at the right hand side of these two. Looking at the right hand side of these two, there's not a whole lot more to see. There's no arm pocket on this side on, on either of the two uh, patterns of smock. But you can possibly see the light here, a nice flat area on the sleeve there with no pockets or anything to interrupt it. The lovely bright colours of the New Zealand DPM. I, I really like DPM print and this is uh, New Zealand clothing uh, that I have in my collection that I've seen and different prints I've seen of, and from photographs. I really like their take on it um, in terms of the bright colours. This isn't quite as bright as some of the British tropical shirts get but it's 
it's a nice uh, level of, of garishness, I suppose you could say, in the, in the quite uh, bright mustardy yellow, um, quite reddish brown and the very light uh, green. And as I say, it looks good on this drill material in contrast to more of the sateen type material of the British smock. So we'll have a look at the, the inside lining of these now uh, and the similarities continue. We have a single inside breast pocket, which you can see here, and in terms of the angle it's set and everything, it's exactly the same across. Uh, the lining material is actually extremely similar, very, very similar uh, sort of cotton poplin material. Uh, so this is lined in the same manner. And you can also see here, though we're missing two uh, on this side, I may actually have some New Zealand buttons uh, or the right colour of buttons in my stock of battle dress buttons to replace these so I'll have to have a look at that you have the three you would have had three buttons on each side as you do with the British smock here uh, and these of course are for the the crotch flap um, which is something taken over from airborne clothing of course and the uh, the Denison smock um, so that feature has been copied across as well we'll see that when we turn around when we turn it around of course it's, it's tucked away in the back um, and as I say in terms of the internal layout and design it's essentially exactly the same you, you can see here we don't have the draw cord at, at um, the, the base and the, the, the waist here, but you can see perhaps the buttonholes let in uh, for the cord to run in this channel here. You can perhaps see the stitching and obviously where the DPM turns over at the bottom there, uh, that forms the channel for the lower one as well. So there are channels for draw cords there, they just aren't fitted. Uh, but that's uh, a look at the front of the interior, we'll have a look at the back now. Looking at the back here, I hope again it's readily apparent the similarities between these two, right down to the positioning of the label. Of course we'll have a look at this in detail in just a moment. You can see here at the back we have a large poacher's pocket in the rear here just as we do on the British and it's sewn and attached in exactly the same manner and we also have the, the tail here the, the crotch flap um, which can be obviously buttoned round to those buttons in front in theory um, exactly the same design so again copied across uh, very little difference between them uh, but you can see again the lining material here very similar to that on the British and we even have on both of them the, the hanging tab at the top there as you can see, we'll get a close-up of a label of the New Zealand smock now. You can see a close-up of the label of the New Zealand smock, and you can see NZ Defence Property, which is a common thing to see on New Zealand items. Uh, and then you have the size 4, and I believe this corresponds to British Army sizing. Uh, the same size system is used by the British Army, uh, judging by the size of this smock. And then you have the Tracy, Tracy Manufacturing Company Limited, the manufacturer under that, and the date of 1986. And, no one's written their name in this one, which is quite nice. And then you have the various uh, washing instructions, uh, general instructions, and then for cold weather use. And in fact, here we are. Uh, I should have uh, mentioned that earlier on. We do have instructions for the hood. So the hood can be buttoned to the neck and under the, co under the collar and the shoulder strap buttons. So there we are. Uh, as you can see, it does indeed seem that this was intended to be worn with a hood that could be attached using the three buttons around the collar. So there we are. That's a look at New Zealand 1980s uh, DPM smock. A really nice thing. I'm really happy to have, have picked this up um, and thank you very much for, to Jonathan Hines who sent me the package across as discussed in the previous video. Uh, it's a lovely item and I'm looking forward to displaying this with some of the New Zealand kit on it, a uh, set of webbing and the helmet and so forth or with the J hat possibly as well. Uh, but I'm very very pleased with this. It's a lovely item to have and as I say as we've done in this video it's interesting interesting to contrast this with the the British uh, it's also interesting because if you look at Australian kit uh, post Vietnam the American influence continues and they were using the M65 uh, combat jacket uh, field jacket rather um, when they were wearing combat uniform as opposed to just the shirt and trousers from their greens uh, whereas New Zealand a lot of their uniform uh, if you look at their trousers they're very similar to the British tropical DPM trousers they went back for a lot more British influence in their kits than the Australians did the Australians continued sort of with the US influenced kit uh, New, New Zealand's web equipment remained US influenced but the uniform returned back to being quite heavily influenced by British practice and that can be seen here uh, in this comparison I do hope you found that interesting, as I always say. Uh, if you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or, if you, or you've already subscribed, please make sure you hit the little notification button, the little bell down below, which will alert you when I upload future videos. Uh, if you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can do. There is a, both a Patreon and a PayPal link down below and a massive thank you as ever to everyone who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated. Uh, there's also social media as well as Facebook, Instagram and Twitter all linked down below should you wish to follow the channel on social media. And of course there is also uh, an email address down below as well should you wish to get in touch with me but you don't really use social media all that much. Uh, but that's everything for this video I think so. Until next time, bye for now.